Biden. Hey everybody, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Medicine Page and let's just jump into the video. So in today's video I am going to be talking about my scars, how many I have, where they came from, all that sort of stuff. Um, I've been posting a whole bunch of really long videos at the moment so I've written notes on my phone so that I can try and just get on with it and not like let this video drone on for too long. Okay so I'm gonna start from the head downwards and I'm just I'm gonna have like shots of of my scars either here or just on the screen okay so the first lot of scars i'm going to talk about are actually eight scars that are all around my head you can't see the ones around here because of my hair but um yeah i'll show an extra shot or something when i'm not wearing makeup but i have two sort of like pencil sized holes scars um, just sort of above my eyebrows. Those are from something called Halo Traction, which my mum has some photos of it and if I can find them by the time I've put up this video or by the time I'm editing this video, I'll put those here as well. Um, Halo Traction is just, it's like this big metal frame thing that is screwed into your head and then they sort of like hang weights off it and that's to like sort of straighten up your spine. If you've seen videos of me like wider shot sitting, you'll see that I sit really rigidly straight. And that's from another scar, another surgery that I'll be talking about in a second. But Halo Traction was like the first step of that. I need to stop looking in the viewfinder. I just, this is the first time I've worn makeup in ages, so I keep looking at it. Um. But yeah, those are where my head scars came from. As I said, there's two in the front that you can see and then six hidden by my hair. Um, I was in Halo Traction for, I don't know, two, three weeks, something like that. Um, and that was the beginning of my, well I might as well like go, hang on, where does this one start? Here, that one's technically higher. So I'll go head, throat, back and then continue down so yeah my head scars came from halo traction which I was in for like two to three weeks and they've left scars that sort of look like I had devil horns at some point in my life I don't know um the second scar I'm going to talk about by the way I have 15 scars all together last time I checked or else I'm bad at maths um and the second scar is actually the only scar that people tend to notice straight away. And that is my throat scar. That I don't need B-roll footage of because you see it in every video. This scar is from a tracheotomy. I had that in for several years. Um, and yeah, that's what that's for. I had difficulties breathing as a baby and I had the trachea in for several years and... It's left this beautiful scar, which I mean, I actually, I actually genuinely don't give a shit about my scars. They're, they're there. Um, they tell a story. By the way, this is going to be a very summarized version of my medical history, partly because I don't know a whole bunch of it, um, and that is my choice to not know the full details. Um, if you guys want like a proper video talking about my medical history which I haven't really done one of those since my very first video. Um, let me know down below or ask me questions about it for my Q&A. The third scar I'm going to talk about is my spine scar. Which again, I will have B-roll footage either here or on the screen as I'm talking. But it's a really long scar. It goes from like the base of my neck down to pretty much my butt crack. <laughs> um, that is from spinal fusion surgery which this will be a really summarized thing because I don't I purposely wasn't paying attention um 
when they told me uh, like about that sort of stuff. So I don't know which like from where to where I'm fused. I know it's like almost to the pelvis because they were leaving like fusing me to the pelvis as a last resort. Um, was it pelvis? I don't know. I don't freaking know. I've already said I wasn't paying attention. Um, but it's very long. It was very painful. Um, basically I had the halo traction for several weeks and then I had the spinal fusion and then pretty much the next day they were getting me up and not teaching me how to walk again but like helping me because it was so painful that I just I couldn't walk and I'd been in a wheelchair for three weeks with the halo traction that I didn't actually talk about. Halo traction, going all the way back to the start. Halo traction, you have your, the screws in your head and the weights hanging off, but you can't stand or walk around with it. You either have to be in a wheelchair or lying flat on your bed, on your back. Which, if you know me, you will know that I am not a back sleeper or a lying flat sleeper at all. Um... That was probably the most difficult part of it. So the spinal surgery. Um, can't remember how long I was in the hospital for after after that. But it was a lot of physical therapy. A lot of just like relearning how to do stuff. And I am still relearning how to do stuff seven years later. Because... Having my spine fused means I have a very limited range of movement. I can't bend, I can't, um, I can't stand for long periods of time. Um, but I mean I wasn't great at that beforehand. So yeah, um, after that I came home. I was on bed rest for another month. I swear to God the entire process felt like it took a year. It didn't. But it felt like it. Um, and yeah, moving on. The next scar I'm going to talk about. Which one is higher? This one. You can't see where I'm pointing. But I am essentially pointing to my boob. Okay, I zoomed out, but like that doesn't really help and I can't go back further. Um, but I have a scar which is going to be real difficult to film because it is directly under my left hip pretty much um that is from this one I had to ask my mum about because I, I just I didn't know uh this one's from where they had to take rib cartilage to rebuild my throat after um the trachea uh, don't, don't, I don't, I don't know a whole bunch about that because I was like three, four, something. Fun fact, I get this weird cough when I'm really uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable talking about my shit. I just don't do it very often. So, um, yeah. The next one I am going to talk about which one is higher... One on my stomach. <coughs> I have another scar on my stomach from a feeding tube that has a scientific name that I can't remember. Um, the feeding tube I had in for a very, 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 very long time. Um, I have issues with the scar. Not the scar the situation. I live in a small town. And small towns have people. And people know people and people know people and people know everyone's business. Essentially I had this feeding tube in for all of my childhood and uh, funnily enough Kids find kids with feeding tubes weird. So I was, I was, I was bullied for most of my childhood um, regarding the 
feeding cube uh, as to how they knew about it. Teachers, well, they started to eventually, but teachers didn't really give much of a shit about, you know, keeping it private-ish, so I would just be, like, fed in the classroom. Fun times. So, yeah, there was a whole, whole solid section of my childhood where I was the weird kid with the feeding tube in her stomach. Can I help you, sir? Um, and then when that came out, my sky did this weird thing where it sort of just turned into like a second belly button, and so then I was the weird kid with the second belly button. Um, it doesn't look like that anymore, as you will see in the footage. Um, for some weird reason, the scar opened back up and they had to fix it, and the way they fixed it was to go back into surgery and like just sort of like sew it shut and align so now it looks like that. Um, the scar itself I have a weird relationship with because it's it's often seen and for some reason while I don't give a shit about this one being seen I I always feel really uncomfortable about this one being seen. Um, I also hate people touching it uh, because I, I flinch whenever anybody gets near it. Um, it's like a, it's like an automatic reflex. Uh, feeding tubes get full. And when they get full, they explode. So you need to change them before they get full. I hated getting mine changed. I always hated getting mine changed because um, while it didn't hurt, you you could feel everything. Um, <laughs> You could feel it coming out, you could feel it going back in, you could, uh, you felt it when you were being fed. Anyways, um, I always hated that feeling, so whenever it came time to have it changed, um, it, it was a really difficult process, um, I'm like losing my shit, um, my mum, had to change it herself because like it's, it's it's kind of a stupid thing to like keep going into the hospital every every however long it was just to get this thing taken out and taken in and mum knew how to do it like pretty sure the parents are like trained in this sort of stuff especially when you needed it for as long as I did um anyway because I hated the feeling thinking about doing this, I was crying. Um, because I hated having it done, uh, I would squirm, and I still squirm, even though there's nothing there. I don't want people to think that this is at all child abuse, because it, it wasn't, it was it was like a necessary evil. Um, it had to be changed, because, you know, it would explode, and then like all the shit that was in it would go throughout my body, and I'd get sick and die probably, um, I don't know, and to change it, let's just say that from a really young age, my brother learned that when it was time to change my tube, he was to sit on my legs. Because I would squirm, mum would hold my arms and they would have to change it, um, holy shit, and looking back on it, it, re it really wasn't that bad, it was something that had to be done, and I, I just, I just made it more difficult by, by squirming all the time, um, but now I'm stuck with issues where if anyone comes near the scar, I feel the need to move and protect a random part of my body with everything I have. But yeah, that's that's my stomach scar. Um, moving on. The next scar that I'm going to talk about is one on my leg. That's another one that's fairly long. Um, that one, I believe, is from a muscle biopsy. I think 
I took like a really long time to walk. Um, so they did a muscle biopsy just to make sure like that my leg muscles were okay and like the reason I wasn't walking wasn't anything to do with that. So, um, yeah, it's that one. Okay, the next scar, not the final scar, that I'm going to talk about is one on my foot. That one I got from a drip, like, you know, like an IV drip type thing. Um, I got it from that. Uh, you can have drips on your hands or your feet or whatever. I always had them on my hands, but this one happened to be on my foot. Um, and whatever was in the IV came out and kind of like left a burn type mark. And so I have just this weird little scar from that on my foot. Um, that one's way less noticeable and I kind of forget it's there. <coughs> Did you know that I stutter when I'm emotional? Because apparently I, I didn't know I did that. Um, I feel like that's a normal thing, but I just, I didn't realise that I did it. Um, and the final scar that I'm going to talk about, eyebrow stuff, is a really, really tiny one um, on my arm, which simply came from being an idiot. Um, we had to have one, didn't we? Um, I was trying to do a DIY project with a craft knife and the craft knife slipped and I accidentally stabbed myself and now I have a tiny scar. And that's that one. Scars I did not mention um, and scars that I don't count as like part of my 15 scars are my self-harm scars and that's, that's pretty much because they have faded so much that myself and friends and family who were there in the times that I felt the need to self-harm are the only ones who can see them. One of my friends basically said that you can only see them if you know what you're looking for. So yeah, that's why I didn't really talk about them. I used to have a photo of them, but I mean, I don't know where that photo's gone and like that's not really the sort of thing that I want to put on YouTube anyway. If you're wondering why I had a photo of them, it's because I was, I was, I thought I was edgy and I needed the world to know I was in pain. Um, but yeah, that's just sort of why I didn't really talk about them in case the people who knew that I had issues with self-harm in the past thought that I was just completely ignoring them. I'm not, I'm just not really mentioning them because they're not really there. Those were all my scars. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. And a comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, tap the bell notification thingy to be notified every time I post and I will see you next time. Bye!